Fiji's coup culture began back in 1987. Colonel Sidavani Rambuka staged two of them with the aim of asserting ethnic Fijian dominance over Indian Fijians. I believe it is in the national interest that I carry out the events of this morning, the takeover of the government. Chiefs, soldiers and coups have been the dominant features of Fiji since 1987. Yet in all the mayhem, coup cool leader Colonel Rambuka's first thoughts were of the Queen. I uh, am worried about her reaction, Her Majesty's reaction, and I uh, agree that we have always been uh, very loyal to uh, Her Majesty. But in 1987, Colonel Rambuka abolished the Queen's role in Fiji, becoming the first man to oust a British monarch since Oliver Cromwell. In the past 24 hours, the new military rulers of Fiji have embarked on a path which heralds a unilateral declaration of independence and a final break with the Commonwealth. With the army now in control and a limited curfew in force, the military are moving quickly to consolidate their position. Unlike the coup in May, when they handed back the reins of government to civilian politicians and the Governor-General, this time they appear to be intent on imposing their political will. The leader of the coup, Colonel Sitivanu Rambuka, says he will abrogate the constitution and declare a republic. He's tried to persuade the Queen's representative, Governor-General Sipanaya Ganilau, to become president. The Governor-General's refused, insisting he will stay at his post. For the moment, at least, the military's hand has been stayed. But they seem determined to make Fiji a republic, despite the repercussions that will have for the Commonwealth. Meanwhile, while away from cameras in government house, Colonel Rambuka confronted the Governor-General, Radu Zanaya Ganilau. He told him he'd scrap the Constitution and offer the Governor-General presidency of his new republic. But with that came an ultimatum. Either the Governor-General recognized him as Fiji's leader, or he'd be dismissed. The Queen's appointed head of state refused to budge, saying the only way he'd leave government house was dead or in chains. Jeremy, what is the very latest you can tell us about the meeting between uh, Colonel Rambuka and the Governor-General? The details still seem to be pretty sketchy, and we feel that it may be uh, not until tomorrow that we get a full outline of it, but there's no doubt about it that the talk ended in deadlock. They were both, as uh, somebody described it, rock solid at the end of it, that Rambuka insists that the Governor-General recognizes him as the new executive authority in the country, all steps down. The Governor General has basically said, over my dead body. He said, uh, he was quoted by the Chief Justice as saying, the only way I'll leave Government House is dead or in iron. So at the moment, they're locked in confrontation, absolutely deadlocked, and nobody's sure which way it's going to go. But there is a feeling that it's coming to a head pretty rapidly now. The crunch could be in the next 24, 48 hours. Is it true that Colonel Rambuka offered the Governor General the position of President? We understand he did, and at, at the moment, um, the, what we hear is that the Governor General is saying, I am already Queen's appointed executive authority in this country, and I don't plan to step aside from that. The only person who could remove me from that office is the Queen, and the Queen, apparently so far, is still supporting the Governor General in that position. But by this morning, the Prime Minister appeared in a much more conciliatory mood. 
he virtually accepted the fact that he was no longer in charge and that the governor general had dissolved parliament. He's done it anyway. He, he, you know, he's done it. You know, uh, and he's done it. And uh, he's created a council of advisors, which I think is more important how we could see ourselves accommodated in that to work towards rebuilding this nation. So you're there any to work with him. But although Mr. Bavandra talked about reconciliation, the atmosphere in Fiji tonight remains tense and the country's constitutional position uncertain. Channel 4 News has learned that when the Council of Chiefs meets tomorrow, it will try to make sure that Mavandra never again becomes Prime Minister by kicking out the Queen's representative, the Governor-General, putting the army back in control and making Fiji a republic. In my position as a Chief of Operations in the Royal Fiji Military Forces, and after monitoring the events of the past few weeks and with information about planned activities of certain groups in the community, I believe it is in the national interest that I carry out the events of this morning. All that was code for one single event, the accession to power for the first time in 20 years of a Labour-dominated coalition, led by this man, Timoteo Bavandra. Bavandra's election victory was achieved at the expense of the Alliance Party, it was seen as the guarantor of the rights of Melanesian Fijians, who make up just under half the country's population. When Bavandra won his election and brought seven Indians into his cabinet, indigenous Fijians took to the streets. It was the biggest demonstration ever of its kind in the Fijian capital, Suva. Its aim was audacious to say the least. Fijians were attempting to persuade their governor-general to change the country's constitution, to ignore the election result, and to restore power to them. In a dramatic development tonight, Colonel Rambuka, the man who only 24 hours ago declared himself head of a de facto republic, has put his plans on hold. It follows a surprise meeting with deposed Prime Minister Dr. Timothy Bavandra, his predecessor Ratu Mara, and the governor-general. Diplomatic sources say the Governor-General has brought the three men together to thrash out a settlement that would pull Fiji back from the brink. After the coup last May, Fiji's Governor-General tried to reassure the Melanesians. But as the deliberations neared completion two days ago, the Melanesians rejected any concept of power-sharing with the Indians. They found a champion again in Colonel Rambuka. Well, he seems to be a man of considerable determination. I think that's the first thing. He's also someone who has a fervent and unshakable belief in the dominance and paramountcy of his people, the Fijian people. Uh, he commanded the Fiji Battalion in the Lebanon. He's had a bit of experience outside uh, Fiji. Uh, his limitations are quite clear, that is to say someone who doesn't understand the economy, but who does understand power and seeks it. Why did he choose now? Uh, because I think the outcome of the long and extremely difficult talks undertaken uh, under the chairmanship of the Governor-General uh, with the deposed Prime Minister and the previous Prime Minister uh, had resulted in a prospect which he wouldn't accept. The timing of it came as a surprise. The fact of it was always in the background, but I think it still came as a shock because it looked as if, and in, indeed the timing of it, I think is related to the fact the Governor-General was expected to make a speech, in fact was prepared to make a speech only tonight, saying that he'd worked out and been able, with all the parties concerned, to get a historic consensus and the path to return to constitutional government was going to proceed. And I think that Colonel Rambuka and the army coup is really being timed because they didn't want this to happen. Happen. They wanted to preempt the centre of the political stage and stop the Governor General's plans going ahead. I uh, am worried about her reaction, Her Majesty's reaction, and I uh, agree that we have always been uh, very loyal to uh, Her Majesty. Um, and I also believe that the outcome of uh, or the result of our actions will not uh, be based purely on uh, Her Majesty's views. She will probably be under pressure from. Uh, from the machinery that is the Commonwealth. And I believe we have been a good member of the Commonwealth. We have paid our dues. We have uh, fought the Commonwealth uh, wars with other members of the Commonwealth. And if it takes a, a minor incident, in, which has uh, been executed in the interest of the indigenous people, and if it takes 
only that to get us expelled from the Commonwealth, perhaps it's not worth being in the Commonwealth. I proclaim that as from this day forth, Fiji is declared a republic. I want to make it quite plain that New Zealand does not recognize the legality of Rambuka's self-declared republic. It is the fervent wish of New Zealand that the Governor-General stands firm to the principles which he has been espousing in such difficult circumstances for such a long period of time. It is New Zealand's view that it would be tragic if he were to place his cloak of legitimacy on what, from reports thus far received, would be clearly an illegitimate form of government. He has told me that he has rejected uh, the uh, action of uh, Colonel Rambuka, and as I understand, he's conveyed that uh, uh, to Her Majesty. Governor-General is still Governor-General. I spoke with him on the telephone earlier this morning and he said he remained absolutely firm and uh, we continue to recognise him as Governor-General and as the sole legitimate source of executive authority in Fiji.